Question number two, calculate the molality of a solution containing 16.3 grams of a molecular compound urea, C4, CH4, N2O, in 600 milliliters of water. So the first thing that we have to realize is what the question is asking here. So we're looking for the molality. And again, the molality is not molarity, but it's moles per kilogram. So in this question here, we have 16 grams of our compound, and we have 600 milliliters of water. So converting the milliliters into kilograms should be the easy part here. Now again, if you need assistance on that, remember that when you have your milliliters of water, one gram of water has a volume of one milliliter. And then to convert that into kilograms, simply do that. So again, remember that the one kilogram is bigger than the thousand grams. So in that case here, that gives us a 0.6 kilogram solution. So we can stick that, whoops, place that down here on the bottom. And then we're looking for 16.3 grams of urea. Here's tap this down a urea. So let's see here, 16.3 of our CH4 in 2O. So one more of that. And we have one carbon. And all of that has a nice little molar mass of 60. Point 0 0.62 grams. So six, take 16.3.27, we'll say one moles, which is, leave that value in your calculator, you have that, and then divide it by 0 0.6. And again, our molality is moles per kilogram. And molality so is 0 0.452, we'll say. And I would leave it as moles over kilograms. Just to keep you out of trouble there. Okay, so again, looking at this question, make sure that you box in the information that's actually given to you. So identify the type of question you're looking at. Realize that we do have a molecular compound, but actually it doesn't matter in this case because we're not doing a freezing point or a boiling point uh, deviation there. And then obviously be able to change that into moles. Let's look at the next question, number four. Calculate the boiling point elevation. So again, recognizing that we're boiling for a solution containing 1,250 grams of the molecular compound glucose. Now again, I'm being nice here by telling you that this is a molecular compound. So that when you go and decide whether you're going to do your uh, boiling point elevation or freezing point depression, that do you need to worry about the Van Hoff factor or the multiplier? In this case, if it's molecular, the I value will always be one. So that's kind of nice. Also knowing that you're doing boiling, so the equation that you're going to use here is actually K sub B times molality. Now again, if you choose to incorporate the I, probably not a bad idea. Just keep in mind that that value is one. Why? Because you are looking at a molecular compound. So the glucose doesn't dissociate. It only dissolves when placed in water. So if I start off with one mole of glucose, when I place it in water, I still have one mole of glucose particles. So that's really nice. Um, the Kb, since we're boiling, that constant is 0.51. And again, kilograms mole. And then now the hard part, where we actually have to change the milliliters of water into kilograms and the 12 point, I'm sorry, the 1,250 grams into moles. But the kilogram part is the easy part. So again, divide that by 1,000. That gives you 3.256 kilograms. And let's find out how many actual moles of glucose we have here. So 1,250 grams of C6H12O6. I know it has a molar mass of around 180, but let's let's make it official here. Okay. 
180.156. This is the molar mass. Therefore, finding that, we're going to take six point. Wait a minute. Six point nine four. Sorry, six point nine four moles. So six point nine four moles goes there. And again, this is our boiling point elevation. So let's see what that value is there. So we'll get an equal sign and we'll bring it down here. So let's type all that in. 1.09, we'll say. So 1.09 is equal to our delta T sub B, which means that that is the temperature in which the water will boil at a higher temperature. So we need to add that to 100 degrees. 1.09 degrees Celsius, so our total is 101.9 degrees Celsius. Pretty fun. Number five, what is the freezing point depression for a solution containing 110 grams of the ionic compound aluminum nitrate dissolved in 1,000, let's cancel out one of those ends there, in 1,200 grams of water. So again, you have an ionic compound, you know it's an ionic compound, not because I told it to you, but because you have aluminum, which is a metal. So let's write that out first. So aluminum nitrate, so aluminum, Al, nitrate ends in ATE, so that's a poly. So once you get one of each of those written out, now write the charges. So aluminum has a plus three charge, nitrate's negative one. That means we need three of those. We don't have three of those, we have one. So make sure you parentheses and show it like that. Then make sure you show the dissociation. So I have an aluminum ion, plus three charge, and I have three nitrate ions. So NO3, and a negative one charge. So here's my question. We do care about the Van Hoff factor here. So if we start off with one molecule of aluminum nitrate, we're going to finish with four of those. So your I, in this case, is equal to four. So we can look at our equation. We're doing freezing point. So delta T sub F is equal to our multiplier K sub F times molality. So plug that in. We have four as our value. We have our K sub F, which is our constant. So 1.86 degrees kilogram per mole. And now we need to find the molality. So the easy part of the molality is the kilograms of water. So divide the 1,200 by 1,000. That gives you 1 1.2 kilograms. And let's find out how many moles we have of the aluminum nitrate. So what was it? 110. So we have 110 grams of aluminum nitrate. And aluminum has a molar mass of 26.98. And let's find out what that molar mass is. So that molar mass is 213.01 grams. So 110 divided by that, 0.516. there. Six moles. So again, our kilograms cancel, our moles cancel. Now we're left with degrees Celsius. 3.2. 3 3.2. Yeah, 3.2. So since this is a freezing point depression, again, this equals your delta T sub F, so that means that we're starting at zero and we're dropping down. So start at zero and our change is lowering the freezing point, so we want to subtract that from zero. Pretty straightforward. Number seven, 
Indicate which of the following solutions in the given pairs would have the highest boiling point. Circle the correct answer. What would be nice is if you could explain why it has a higher boiling point. Now again, keep in mind what we're looking at is we have, say, our boiling point. Let me see if I can move this up. Yeah. Okay, so what we're looting at is this equation here. Delta T sub B, and again, your I there, your KB, and your molal. What we have are two salt water solutions where solution A has a 0.25 molality and, and solution B has a 0.4 molality. Now, keeping all things the same, in other words, the I isn't going to change because we have the same salt water type solution. So we're assuming that this is made of sodium chloride. These two values here do not change because we're looking at the same type of solution. The only thing that's different is that I have a molality that's 0.25 and a molality that's 0.4. So really, the only thing that changes is our molality value. These two remain the same. Therefore, if that number is higher, what happens to our delta B? It too is higher. If that value is lower, what happens to our delta T? It too is lower. So to answer this question, which one has a higher boiling point? Well, which, the question is really asking, which one has a greater change in the boiling point? Well, it has to be the 0.4 because that value is higher than the 0.25. Therefore, we're going to get a higher value with our delta T sub B. That's what that question is asking. That's strictly a concept question, not asking to do math. So let's look at this next component of the question. So solutions containing a 0.5 moles or containing 0.5 moles of a solute. So we have two solutions. This one has 0.5 moles for our molecular compound, 0.5 moles, and this one has also 0.5 moles. Okay. Now hopefully you're reading carefully because we have the same number of moles of this compound. We have two very different things here. We have one that is a molecular compound, and again, it means it has nothing but non-metals in it, and we have an ionic compound, which has a metal and a non-metal in it. Keeping all things the same. Again, this one's asking for maybe a higher boiling point or a lower freezing point, it doesn't matter. So in this case, let's say that we're looking at the boiling point. Okay. You have this equation. Okay. Now in this situation, we have these two variables are the same because they both have a 0.5 mole solution. They have that many moles and we're assuming that they have the same volume. It doesn't say that, but it's very safe to assume that. Okay. So if both of these remain the same. Now we have to focus on the multiplier or the Van Hoff value. You know that if it's a molecular compound, that this will remain as C2H5OH. So we start off with one molecule, we finish with one molecule. Therefore, the I value remains one. So whatever this value is equal to, we multiply it by one. Looking at this one, the calcium phosphate, we have three calcium ions and we have two phosphate ions. So our Van Hoff factor has gone from one to five. In other words, add up the coefficients. So now my Van Hoff factor, my multiplier, is five times that of this. Therefore, since that value is higher, that's going to call, and keeping these the same for both of these solutions, this will cause my delta T to also be higher. So in the, the answer to this question would be that this solution, the calcium phosphate solution, would cause the boiling point to be higher. And I believe that's what the question was asking. Yeah, so increasing the boiling point. So again, when looking or confronted with a question like this, it's a concept question, Know which things don't change. Well, obviously the constant's never going to change, but the molality could change or the I could change. That is going to determine the bigger change in the boiling point or the freezing point.